Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into today's second video. We're going to have a look at whether it's week to 10 days for today's second video. That takes us around the 28th of January, day 10. We can extend a little bit beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks, so that takes us into early February. We'll also have a look at the um, extended 30-day uh, ECM WF temperature numbers at the Hungarian Met Office as well for the next four weeks. That'll be at the end of the video. So quite a lot to cram in. I hope you find it interesting and informative. JMA Friday was released earlier on today and that's covering the next month as well so that takes us into the middle of February and overall it's looking pretty cold I have to say uh, with both the Japanese and CFS B2 models well into February looks like things are going to be staying quite cold indeed. That video is here on my home page at gaslovings.com so it's above the snow desk, have a look at that and uh, see what's going on. Um, I think it's going to be a live chat uh, on Sunday evening. Myself and Quantum uh, look like we're going to do a live chat between 6 and 8 o'clock on Sunday evening at Gazweathervids. It'll be fully interactive, so you'll be able to ask questions at gazweathervids.com and also uh, on our social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and all of that kind of thing. It'll be on Quantum's uh, YouTube channel as well. So um, over there, there'll be uh, a live chat uh, that you can uh, ask questions on too. So um, 6 to 8 on Sunday evening, live chat coming up uh, with myself and Quantum. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this weekend's updates at the end of the video, actually. But before I do anything else, I've got to say a big thank you to our latest... What have I got rid of that for? Let's bring that back. I've got to say a big thank you to our latest um, patrons. So we are now up to 58 patrons for Gazworthy's, and our 58th patron is Ray Pritchard. So a big thank you to Ray Pritchard for becoming Gazworthy's 58th patron. If you would like to become a patron, for Gals I can't believe how this is going up. It's absolutely uh, astonishing. See, we only started this back in June, um, and we are already at 58 patrons. So totally and completely blown away by the response. If you would like to become a patron for Gals of and give an ongoing monthly donation, it can be anything from $1 a month upwards. So it doesn't have to be a large amount of money at all. But of course, it goes in with everybody else's donations. And so the overall total donations um, are ever increasing. If you would like to become a patron for Gazovis, then all you need to do is come to the Gazovis, dot, um, the Gazovis Patreon page. I'm on that page right now. And we link to this at all the pages at Gazovis and in the description at YouTube. So you just come here, sign up for a Patreon account, and then you'll be able to pledge whatever amount of money you would like from $1 a month upwards to uh, Gazworthy's 58th patron, 58 patrons so far. Big thank you to each and every one of you for your uh, generosity and support for Gazworthy's. You're helping us to pay for our website. We are primarily ads funded, of course, will be remaining. So, um, but it's an extra revenue stream. And a big thank you to uh, all other patrons of Gazworthy's. Also, pay. PayPal. So if you would like uh, to just give a one-off donation, then uh, you just come to Gaz of his uh, PayPal page. Again, we link to his saddle page, Gaz of his, and in his description YouTube. You uh, sign into your PayPal account. Most people have one of those these days. I mean, given uh, you give a one-off donation, whether you become a patron or whether you give a one-off donation through uh, PayPal. You will get a mention in the videos as long as you want one. If you would rather stay anonymous, leave a little note with your uh, donation and uh, let us know that you would rather not have a have a have a mention. But otherwise, we will give you a shout out in videos and say thank you very much. Big thank you to all of the patrons. Big thank you to all of the donors uh, for Gals of and a special thank you to Ray Pritchard. Right, so I'm going to start off with the situation today. So we've got this band of wet weather coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. This band of precipitation through western and southwest of Scotland, down to northwest England, down to Wales, down to southwest parts of England too. Now beginning to um, come into the Midlands, but looking rather patchy uh, as it does so. Now, this is, I say it's a band of precipitation rather than a band of rain uh, because there's a mix of rain, sleet and snow in with this. Let's have a look at the precipitation type. So it's showing sleet down across the far southwest. I'm not sure about that at all, actually, because if you overlay the dew point, uh, you see that the dew point is actually quite high down in the far southwest. But it is showing uh, sleet around um, sort of Plymouth, that kind of area. If anyone is watching in Plymouth, please let me know uh, by the description, uh, by the the comments 
Um, let me know whether it has been sleeting or snowing down uh, in that uh, southwestern corner this morning. It doesn't look from a dew point as though it should be, but that's what the uh, radar is showing. Also got some sleet snow across parts of southwest Scotland, north England. I know there's been some snow through parts of Wales as well. You'll see that the dew point is generally still widely below freezing across most parts of Scotland, eastern England, down into the Midlands, central, southern, southeastern parts of England too. Uh, if I overlap now the surface temperature you'll see it's a pretty chilly afternoon out there temperatures are around four five six degrees quite widely so it's going to be a, a wintry mix that's coming across the country I think during the course of rest this afternoon and this evening there'll be a mix of rain sleet snow uh, mixed in the only thing that's going to happen with this is that as it pushes across the country it will start to break up become increasingly light and uh, patchy if we get rid of all of that and reload the page you can see how it is already breaking up across the midlands that's what's in store with this system as it pushes across so the precipitation on it will become quite light so there could well be snowflakes around this evening don't be surprised if you're through the midlands or eastern parts of the country you see some snow fluttering past your window or it's out and about if you see it under the lampposts um later on tonight but uh overall it's not going to amount to too uh much did snow much yesterday of course and we were focusing on this band of precipitation coming in from off the Atlantic today and then also the situation on Monday night and into Tuesday so um, this is the latest from the GFS at theweatheroutlook.com and uh, for today we've got this band of uh, showery rain and snow moving in from off the Atlantic that's three o'clock this afternoon taking that area of snowy parts of northern England and into Midlands uh, pushes further east was into eastern parts of England through the course of uh, this evening, rain down in the south. Notice it becoming very showery in nature, uh, this system. And that's by the situation by 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. There is a bit of snow across Lincolnshire down to East Anglia at that point, but just generally showery bursts of rain, sleet, a little bit of snow. Uh, mixed in. And then through tomorrow, it all turns very, very light and patchy. Something there, perhaps through the Midlands again around the midday tomorrow. Light snow, sleet, or rain uh, possible. Through the course of day, it looks as though generally that kind of like fizzles out. Uh, then we go into Sunday. We've got a band of patchy rain, sleet, and snow across Scotland and Northern Ireland on uh, Sunday. Otherwise, not a great deal happening. It turns a bit colder though on uh, sunny and then more definitively we bring this band of wet weather in from off the atlantic on uh monday evening so this is six o'clock in the evening on monday heavy rain into scotland and northern ireland cold air is undercutting that uh band of heavy rain and it's turning things uh turning the rain to heavy snow across western scotland and northern ireland by six o'clock in the evening and then that pushes south and east so heavy rain moving into midlands turning to snow uh on the back edge that's midnight on Tuesday. Wet across the Midlands, central, south, eastern parts of England. Uh, but behind it, it's turning readily to snow. So heavy snow through parts of northern England and down into Wales. And then that snow coming further south through the Midlands, some parts of uh, Lincolnshire into East Anglia through the early hours of Tuesday. Uh, snow even into the southeast, possibly being suggested here by the time you get through to six o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. Just depends how much of a cold air undercuts this band of um, rain as to how much snow there is. It might just be a situation where it only snows very briefly for 10 minutes or so on the back edge before you get the clearance. Or it could be a situation where you get like an hour of snow um, before you get the clearance. So it just depends how deep into the back of the uh, weather front this cold air gets but certainly the gfs is suggesting rain and snow moving southwards and eastwards on monday night this is all snow showers packing into the north and to the west too and then that seemed to choose a where that band of well, persistent rain and snow moves out of the way but we have lots of snow showers piling into the west and uh suggestion of a little bit of a stream of air for example on uh, uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, come through the Cheshire Gap. So, uh, snow showers through parts of North West England down into Wales and Midlands, even into the southeast of England. And then beyond that, it just gets colder and colder. We'll talk about that through the uh, latter part of the video.
So, it could be some wintry weather on the way through the early part of next week, and then it, as I say, it gets colder through the course of next week. We'll be keeping you updated on all of that at Gazo in the days ahead. Arctic Oscillation observed and forecast chart is looking like this. So the black line here tells us where we've been with the AO. Red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the AO to go. We're around neutral with the Arctic Oscillation at the moment. And it looks like we're going to go down into negative territory in the next week. Heading into the start of February, we see a lot of scatter. So there are a few members of the GFS ensembles that are producing some slightly more positive AO conditions. However, they are outlier members. Most members are keeping the AO negative, And some are, again, going off the cliff negative down to that sort of level. That one is going off the scale. It's an outlier, but it does go down as far as you can go with the uh, Arctic Oscillation scale down to minus six. Generally, the broad thrust of the GFS ensembles is keeping the AO in negative territory through to the start of February. Remember, the AO is just an index that reflects the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything, it just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. The reason most of those GFS ensemble members are going negative with the Arctic Oscillation is because high pressure is going to be somewhere in the northern latitudes, blocking area of high pressure. And um, because you've got that high pressure over the Arctic, that forces the Arctic Oscillation to go negative. North Atlantic Oscillation is looking like this. Again, the black line shows where we've been with the NAO. The red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NAO to go. Uh, this is where we are right now. We are positive with the NAO uh, right now. Looks like generally we're keeping the, not the GFS ensembles on the positive side um, with the NAO, which is at, it is at odds with what the Arctic Oscillation is uh, doing. We have got a minority of GFS ensemble members that are taking us more towards the negative side with the NAO, but overall I think most of these GFS ensemble members are uh, keeping the NAO in positive territory. So it's a complicated pattern, remains a complicated pattern, because it means that, yes, we are going to have a blocking signal to our north, but at the same time, the Atlantic is going to be uh, relatively active. We're still going to have areas of low pressure moving in off the Atlantic with the jet stream. Um, and, of course, this could be a little bit snowy, actually. If the blocking is sitting in a position that can force cold air southwards, then with a fairly active Atlantic meeting that cold air, and blocking, we might find ourselves going into quite a snowy spell of weather, actually, uh, as going to the latter part of January and the early part of February. GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles are looking like this. Now, I've got the list of places, uh, suggestions of places that you want to see with the GFS ensembles. Unfortunately, at the moment, they're not being updated. These ensembles are not being updated at the new version of uh, Wetter Central. So I've had to put your suggestions for um, places where you can look at for GFS ensembles. I've had to put them on hold for the time being until they get things going again at Wetter Central. What we're looking at here is from the old version of Wetter Central. So there is still a way of having a look at the uh, GFS ensembles uh, at the old version of Wetter Central. Uh, but you're very limited with places there. You can only look at London, for the UK, anyway, you can only look at London, Manchester and Aberdeen. So you've only got three places to go at at the old version of West Central, whereas at the new version of West Central, we can look pretty much at anywhere. And uh, I, when they get things back to normal, we will uh, recommence all of those places that I've got wrote down that you suggested for where you want to look at in this part of the video. But at the moment, we've only got those three uh, cities to go at London, Manchester, Aberdeen. This is the uh, GFS ensemble graph for Manchester uh, today. So the red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Manchester. We're starting off pretty cold and we're going to be keeping things cold. In fact, it's be going colder in the days ahead. You can see there's a general slide in the temperature through the weekend and into next week becoming cold. Yes, it looks like we keep those 
uh, ensembles going between around minus 5 and minus 10 at 850 HPA. Some of the members of the GFS ensembles are going underneath minus 10, as I've explained in the videos all week. If you go into the freezer, uh, get freezing cold conditions, so sort of ice days, severe frost, and if it snows cold enough, than that snow to lay and potentially blow around. Uh, if you get that kind of weather, then you'll go down below minus 10 at 850 HPA. You'll go down to be between minus 10 and minus 15. Some of these ensemble members, including the operational uh, GFS, are now quite consistently doing that, taking us underneath minus 10 at 850 HPA. In any case, seeing if go we don't quite get to that level of cold. It is going to be cold for the foreseeable future. There's no sign of any particularly mild where we have got these milder outliers up here, but they're a real minority now. Most of these GFS ensemble members are keeping us cold. Some of them very, or you'd even say bitterly cold uh, in around a week or so's time. Temperature anomalies from the 18th to the... Oh, we didn't discuss precipitation. So, fire precipitation is concerned. Relatively unsettled as well. That's the unusual thing about this particular pattern. It's going colder, but it is also going more unsettled too, which obviously gives us the potential, increasingly so, I think, as we run into the final week or so of the month, uh, it gives, a, gives us the potential for snow. Right, back to temperature anomalies. Temperature anomalies from the 18th to 26th of January. Colder than average of the UK and Ireland. Look at that. Most parts of Europe now, away from the southeast, where it is milder than average down there. But through most parts of uh, Europe, it's going colder than average. Scandinavia, colder than average. France and Germany, colder than average. Spain and Portugal, colder than average. And the UK and Ireland is included in that too. So, haven't seen much of this at all. This winter has been... Very mild winter, particularly for northern and western parts of Europe, but big, big, big changes now taking place within the atmosphere, sending uh, sending us cold. Now, I expect those charts to trend even colder in the days ahead. Precipitation anomalies from the 18th to the 26th of January, close to average. Possibly still hints of being a little bit drier than average, but overall quite close to average. Slightly more unsettled than it has been through the early part of uh, January. So this is how the GFS is looking for Monday. We've got this ridge of high pressure uh, across the country on Monday with relatively cold air. Then this low pressure and its active front dives south and eastwards Monday night into Tuesday. This is 6 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday. And that's where the front will be. Cold air is coming in from the northwest, undercutting that weather front. And how much of an undercut we get will determine how much snow we might have overnight uh, Monday to Tuesday. That's Wednesday. Low pressure is sinking down the North Sea on uh, Wednesday, turning the wind into this cold northeasterly. By Thursday, we're bringing in a bit of the cold northeasterly wind as high pressure is ridging out to the north and west, and this trough is sinking southwards, becoming centre over Italy. That's the end of next week, a week away, Friday, 25th of January. Bitterly cold east or northeast wind, maybe feeding in snow showers. Possibly even longer spells of snow to eastern parts of the country. Upper air temperatures look cold. And it gets even cold as we go into the final weekend of January. This is for Saturday the 26th of January. High pressure is building over Scandinavia. Real northeasterly winds starting to blow in across the country. And we do begin to see a cold pool slipping out of Scandinavia and down into the North Sea. So by Sunday the 27th of January, we've got this upper cold pool sitting in the North Sea. Um, it's over the sea, of course, so it could generate a lot of instability and potentially quite a lot of snow across the eastern parts of the country. There's the upper air temperatures for Sunday the 27th of January. Minus 10 Celsius of ice firm is pushing through the country. Only have to go over the other side of the North Sea to Denmark You've got the minus 15 Celsius ice firm there uh, knocking on the door of the North Sea. These are the thickness lines. Now, this is very interesting because we've got this pale blue line just here. That's the 528 thickness line. That is uh, well clear of most parts of the country, so it's cold air. But notice this darker blue line. That is the 510 thickness line. Now, when we have the beach from the east, I got rather excited about the 510 thickness line because we did bring that 510 thickness line into the UK when we have beach from the east. It's a pretty rare visitor 
actually uh, the 510 feet aside. We don't get it that often. And when we do it, normally it's from the north. And it normally just affects Scotland on northerly wings. But to get it from the east is quite unusual. And there it is. It's sitting in the North Sea, that 510 fitness line. It's knocking right on the door of the East Coast. If that comes in to the UK, then we are talking about daytime temperatures staying well below freezing. And uh, there would be heavy snow as well uh, with that. You notice that the 510 gets a little bit closer by midday on Sunday, the 27th of January. 510 line is getting into the UK, actually, to east of Scotland. And he's saying that would be very rare for that to happen two winters running. So I say we had this with a beast from the east at the end of last winter, 2017-18. If this is right, then we are bringing it at least into eastern parts of Scotland, northeastern England, um, in of the following winter, which is very unusual. Because as I say, the 510 fitness line is quite a rare visitor to our shores. The reason we're bringing that close to us is that we will keep winds in from the east. So this is for Monday, 28th of January, day 10. Has high pressure blocking to our north, low pressure down to our south. We're bringing this bitterly cold easterly flow across the country. The ice bars are opened out, so there'd be severe night frost there. And uh, away from us now, probably a lot of dry weather, but snow would still be likely in the east too. There's the upper air temperatures. They just look very cold. Minus 10 Celsius ice firm has pushed through the country. Into a more extended range, this GFS run keeps us cold. We keep this blocking feature going around to the northwest of the UK, around Greenland and Iceland, still continuing to pull in these bitterly cold northeasterly winds across the country. And we just generally keep it very cold up to the end of the GFS run. That's as far as we can go descending the 3rd of February. By then, just perhaps signs that the high pressure begin to slip a little bit, perhaps trying to infiltrate some slightly less cold air around the top of it into Scotland anyway. Um, but uh, on the other hand, there's another trough sinking through Scandinavia, so if we was to go on any further, we would probably find that high pressure starting to push back northwards again, and uh, this cold air starting to plunge through Scandinavia once more. Overall, it looks cold for the next couple of weeks, definitely on the GFS operational. This is GFS parallel, so again, it looks uh, wintry early next week, rain, sleet and snow moving down across the country, and this low pressure slipping through the UK, moving away to our south by the second half of next week, we're turning those winds into the east and northeast, bitterly cold air coming in from the east and from the northeast too. Into this weekend of uh, 26th, 27th of January, it stays cold. Low pressure having a go on this parallel run, having a go at moving in from off the Atlantic. That could bring snow in from off the Atlantic as it bumps into that cold air. And then same idea as what's going to happen in the coming week, really. The low pressure just starts to slip southwards again. And the reason this is happening is that the jet stream is on a real southerly track. So this black line here is showing where the jet stream is. The jet stream is dipping down all the way towards uh, southern Spain and North Africa. And so the parallel run just sets us up for a prolonged spell of very cold weather. For example, we've gone to the end of January now. This is 31st of January. And we're feeding in these, still feeding in these bitterly cold east to northeast wind. This is a prolonged, potentially very cold spell of weather may even start have to start thinking a little bit about quite a severe spell of weather, but I don't want to go quite that far just yet. But it is certainly a very cold spell of weather, and there would be prospects for quite a lot of snow as well. As far as we can go with the parallel uh, 6 o'clock GFS run, it's keeping it cold. Um, uh, I mean... Again, the blocking perhaps is just weakening slightly by the 3rd of February. But uh, really still, it looks pretty cold. You have a look at the upper air temperatures. You can see they are cold, very cold, severely cold across Scandinavia. And if I show you the thicknesses again, uh, you'll see that the 510 line is very close. It's actually, we have got some 592 thickness into Scandinavia, which is quite unusual again for that to be as far south as, like, southern parts of Scandinavia, as it's shown there, that purple line, that's normally restricted more towards the North Pole. So everything is telling us that this is a prolonged and potentially severe spell of cold weather that is setting up over the next uh, couple of uh, weeks, certainly for Northern Europe, and at times, potentially for the UK too. The GM, the Canadian model, is uh, 
seeing low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic early next week, bringing rain, sleet and snow. That uh, low pressure then sinks outwards through the UK into central parts of Europe, turns the wind into that bitterly cold east or northeast through the second half of next week. That would drag in snow showers to many eastern parts of the country. Wouldn't rule out some longer spells of snow. Look at that, really blocked by the time it through to this weekend of Saturday, 26th of January. The high pressure is stretched out from Iceland up to Scandinavia. Very cold easterly winds bring snow showers into the UK. Uh, these are classic charts. Been a long time since we've seen this in January. And that's how we finish up with the GEM. Again, very blocked around Greenland and Iceland and these bitterly cold easy winds feeding in across the UK, bringing snow, I'm sure, with them. And then uh, we've got the ECMWF. It all looks very similar through the early part of next week. Rain, sleet, snow on uh, Monday night into Tuesday. Then this low pressure slips southwards, allows pressure to build to the north and west. That turns the wind into this cold or very cold easterly. That's the end of next week, a week away. Friday, 25th of January is feeding in a bitterly cold easterly wind and no doubt quite a lot of snow too. And then we get through to the final weekend of January with the upper air temperatures looking cold to very cold across the country. And uh, we keep this cold weather going. This area of low pressure tries to come in from off the Atlantic, but uh, its progress is blocked by this ridge that's sitting over the UK and much of Central and Northern Europe. That ridge is being generated by very cold upper air temperatures. That's the upper air temperatures at day 10, bitterly cold. Uh, so with that, you'd be talking about daytime temperatures saying at or below freezing all day. There'll be hard overnight frost. The only difference compared to the other runs is that this is a little bit less snowy. I think the ECM is not quite as snowy because we don't have as much of that long fetch easterly wind. But they are all very cold, and they're all pointing towards a prolonged spell of cold or very cold weather. The uh, debilt ensembles from the ECMWF model are in the freezer. So, uh, again, this is where we start off. That This is for Holland, of course, to build in Holland, but it's only over the other side of the North Sea. So, if you've got an easterly wind going, it's relevant uh, for us. We'll be modified a little bit by the North Sea, but not greatly. Um, so, starting off reasonably mild for to build at the moment, around 5 Celsius. Temperatures dropping, though, a little bit up and down to start off with, but certainly by the time you get through to the middle of next week, that's when. Wednesday, Thursday, just there. By then, we're in the freezer in Debilt. So daytime temperatures are at or below freezing all day. Temperatures by night are going underneath minus five. So, I mean, very, very cold. Ice days type cold and with the risk of snow too. And it keeps things very cold, really, the ECM, going right out towards the very end of the run. That's as far as we can get to with the ECM to around 1st, 2nd of February. And generally still a real struggle to get those daytime temperatures much above freezing at that point. The ECM ensembles are looking like this in terms of the postage stamp. So each one of these green lines is an individual ECM ensemble member. We can see how the different scenarios are playing out with the postage stamps from the Icelandic Met Office. This is for day 10, which is uh, 28th of January. So we've got seven, we've got 14 ensemble members that have got blocking through the Atlantic. They've got a mid-Atlantic ridge extending it up towards Greenland as well, with a trough of below average heights to the east and south of the country. They're putting down cold north to northeasterly winds. And we've got another 12 that again have a strong blocking signal through the North Atlantic extends up to Greenland and also over towards Scandinavia with the below average heights to the south of the UK, but a little bit more easterly. They're pulling in very cold easterly winds. We've got nine of the ECM ensemble members at day 10 with a ridge in the central part of the North Atlantic, not quite getting up towards Greenland though, with the below average heights to our northeast. So these are just a little bit more Atlantic based with the wind coming in like that. Still probably quite chilly, still probably quite cold, but not uh, not not very cold.
Uh, then we've got uh, another nine, including the Control member of the uh, ECM ensembles that look like that. They have a trough of uh, below average heights over to South of the country. They indicate a bit of a blocking signal up to the north as well. They'd be quite cold. We have four, including the Operational Run. So the Operational Run, not that well supported by its ensemble today, that has this ridge. You remember I said that it's a little bit more anti-cyclonic, the ECM, or it was this morning, compared to like the GFS and the GM. So not quite much of an easily, just with a ridge very close to the UK. It was still very, very cold. Don't get me wrong, it's very cold, but very little in the way of snow due to that high pressure. But it looks like it was a little bit of an outlier, actually, at least in terms of its snotted pattern. And then finally, we have three uh, on some members again with this ridge over to the western the northwest of the country trough of low pressure to the south southeast they look cold and they look wintry uh, as well uh, two weeks out taking us to the 2nd of february the postage stamps look like that again we've got this blocking feature from the north atlantic extending up towards greenland with these 19 and the below average heights low pressure is over to the south of the country so again they'd be cold or very cold bringing the wind from the northeast direction uh got number 17 with the ridge again through the uh central part of the atlantic extending up towards greenland not quite as far up towards greenland as these 19 but nevertheless very little in it really with the below average heights again over and to the south and east of the UK. They'd be cold again, bringing wind in from the northeast. And then finally, we've got 15 that have this ridge through the Atlantic and going back towards the northern blocking feature. Low pressure is just there. And so they'd be cold too. So by two weeks out, virtually all of the members of the ECM ensembles are looking cold or very cold and wintry, telling us that this is likely to be a prolonged spell of cold weather. The ECM do a 30 day temperature anomalies from the Hungarian office is looking like that this is week one it's week four for the year but it's week one for our forecast period it takes us from the 21st 27th of january and most of europe is locked into the freezer so you have some parts of Scandinavia with temperature anomalies going down to between 6 and 9 degrees below average. For the rest of us, and it includes the UK and Ireland, we're talking about temperature anomalies 3 to 6 degrees below average. That's very cold, can be very cold in the week ahead, but also very dry caused by the blocking area of high pressure. The next week, which takes us from the 28th of January to the 3rd of February, also very cold. This is a prolonged and potentially quite severe cold spell of weather that's setting up for much of Northern Europe. Again, temperature anomalies are between 3 and 6 degrees below average very widely. Again, it's pretty dry because the air is cold. It's dry for much of Northern Europe and any precipitation that does fall is likely to be snow. Doesn't take much snow to cause havoc of course and then we go through to week three which is the 4th to the 10th of february still cold and average not quite as cold as it is in weeks one and two but again still widely for much of northern europe and the uk and Ireland is included in that colder than average also still looking drier than average in northern europe from all of that northern blocking and then week four which is the 11th to 17th of February. Again, widely colder than average. This is a very, very prolonged spell of cold weather. All that happens is that as you get through to weeks three and four, it just backs off the intensity of the cold. And that could mainly be because it just loses the signal slightly as you go further out. But even if that came off, it's still cold and average by as much as one to three degrees below average widely for Northern Europe. This is a really prolonged spell of cold weather that we're seeing setting up here. And um, potentially we're in for it, I think, across much of Northern Europe. I think things could get uh, really quite nasty indeed through the final stages of January into February. I know a lot of people watching this video are hoping for cold weather and snow. But, uh, I mean, if it goes on and if there's a lot of snow and if the temperature gets quite severely cold, then it does become pretty miserable pretty quickly for a lot of people. So, um well, just have to wait and see how it plans out. But everything that we're seeing today is telling me that this is a prolonged spell of cold weather. And uh, it's potentially going to get quite nasty, I think, the way this is going. But, uh, of course, there is time for modification. Maybe it won't get quite as blocked and as cold as these models are indicating today. Have to wait and see about that.
Right, that's what you up to date with all of today's videos. Hope you found them interesting and informative. Over the weekend, we're going to have a weekend forecast. CFX, six months long ahead. Uh, Gazo is Sunday Roundup. Um, there'll also be the ECMWF of Metro France Long Range Update. That will take us well through the spring and into possibly into early summer. And there's going to be a live chat with myself and Quantum talking about the cold weather and snow prospects in the days and weeks ahead. That will be on Sunday, I think, between uh, 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock in the evening. So loads going on. Keep checking back to the website for more. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.